Anything else? I declare the 10th emergency session, the 10th emergency special session of the General Assembly resumed. <laughs> Members will recall that in paragraph 14 of its resolution, ES 10 stroke 21, of 27th October 2023, the Assembly decided to adjourn the 10th emergency special session temporarily and to authorize the President of the General Assembly at its most recent session to resume its meeting upon request from Member States. In this regard, I should like to draw the attention of delegations to document A stroke ES 10 stroke 974, which contains a letter dated 8th December 2023 from the permanent representatives of Egypt and Mauritania to the United Nations in their respective capacities as chair of the Arab group and Organization for Islamic Cooperation Group, requesting the resumption of the 10th emergency special session of the General Assembly. I intend to conduct the proceedings of this meeting in accordance with the rules of procedure of the General Assembly and the past practices of its emergency special sessions. The General Assembly will now resume its consideration of Agenda Item 5, entitled Illegal Israeli Actions in Occupied East Jerusalem and the Rest of the Occupied Palestinian Territory. In this connection, the Assembly has before it draft resolution in document A stroke ES 10 stroke L27 and draft amendments A stroke ES10 stroke L28 and A stroke ES10 stroke L29. The President will now deliver a statement. Excellencies, distinguished delegates. This past week, it was with a very heavy heart that I read the letter addressed to me by UNRWA Commissioner 
General Philip Lazzarini. That letter, on which many of your missions were also copied, highlighted the devastating deterioration of the humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip. As Commissioner General Lazzarini himself predicted in his letter, the situation has since deteriorated further. Right now, what we are seeing is an onslaught on civilians, the breakdown of humanitarian systems, and profound disrespect for both international law and international humanitarian law. As I said before, even war has rules, and it is imperative that we prevent any deviation from these principles and values, the validity of which resides in their universal application. Tens of thousands have been killed. Almost 70% of them, women and children. Even more have been forcibly displaced by the incessant violence with nowhere, I repeat, nowhere safe to go. And the targeting of hospitals schools, and UN-provided shelters now so overcrowded that they have ceased to function as safe havens continues unabated. All the while, the blockade on humanitarian assistance has made the delivery of urgently needed life-saving aid near impossible. Excellencies, clearly what we are witnessing is the unprecedented collapse of an already crumbling humanitarian system in real time. It is incumbent upon us as the United Nations to bring an immediate end to the suffering of innocent civilians, the mounting death toll of those who are not, I repeat, are not combatants in this war, and to this untenable humanitarian catastrophe. Thanks to several countries, relentless efforts a temporary humanitarian truce enabled the release of hostages, the freeing of detainees, and the delivery of some aid. However, since the 1st of December, we are witnessing the resumption of violence with a kind of ferocity that one asks, what more next? Civilians should never undergo the level of suffering we are currently witnessing. And again, I ask, how many more thousands of lives must be lost before we do something? No more time is left. The carnage must stop. For as long as this violence persists, a political solution to this conflict will continue to be undermined. The longer it takes, the higher the risk that a negotiated two-state solution will increasingly become out of reach. So the fact of the matter is, quite simply, the violence must stop. It must. I therefore once again add my voice to the demand of an in, for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. We have one 
singular priority, only one, to save lives. Excellencies, casting our gaze towards the future, we must assess the situation with honesty in our hearts, truth in our words, and a commitment to peace as our utmost ambition. A ceasefire is the only realistic first step towards de-escalating tensions. How can we possibly listen to each other over the deafening thundering of bombs? On 26th October, you gathered in this chamber with the membership resoundingly and unequivocally calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. On December 7th, once more, a veto was cast in the Security Council. Once again, this emergency special session has been resumed. We certainly cannot continue in this way without even the possibility, let alone the prospect, for a meaningful solution. As President of the General Assembly, I am committed to supporting any and all efforts to put an end to the bloodshed and the psychological torture of the people in Gaza. I used my recent attendance at the Doha Forum and every other platform I can to encourage cooperation among states with the same singular goal in mind, to make peace for all. In the name of humanity, I ask you all once again, stop this violence now. I thank you. I now give the floor. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Egypt to introduce draft resolution A stroke ES 10 stroke L 27. Say the Rais. Mr. President, I thank you on behalf of the Arab group for quickly heeding our call to hold this meeting the call from the Arab and Islamic groups in an attempt to overcome the obstruction of the Security Council's attempts to shoulder its responsibilities by calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire in the occupied Palestinian territory. There was an extensive use of the veto against the humanitarian ceasefire draft resolution, even though it was supported by more than 100 member states within a few hours in the United Nations. This is a sign that the majority of the international community is well aware of the seriousness of the current situation and its repercussions, its tragic repercussions on international peace and security. Mr. President, the draft resolution tabled today, A slash ES 10 slash L 27, is very simple, clear, and explicit. It only includes four operative paragraphs. However, the implementation of these paragraphs has yet to happen by the international community for two months. Even though the tragic humanitarian situation is unbearable for the Palestinians, they are subjected to barbaric attacks 
by Israeli occupation forces against civilians in Gaza. This has led to an unbearable humanitarian suffering. It has threatened international peace and security. This is why the Secretary General of the United Nations and the first for the first time since he took office and for several decades decided to invoke Article 99 of the UN Charter to call specifically for what this draft resolution is calling for, namely a humanitarian ceasefire. Because the Israeli aggression destroyed the health system. There are concerns of a demise of the public order and the humanitarian uh, support system in Gaza. It is impossible to provide humanitarian assistance there. And this is why the Commissioner General of UNRWA spoke to you and, and sent you a letter to shed light on the deteriorating humanitarian situation in Gaza and its impact on UNRWA's capacity to shoulder its mandate and how it affects the safety and security of UNRWA staff. Mr. President, the Arab group stresses that the efforts by a minority of states that are standing against international public opinion, which is calling for a, a, a ceasefire, are using void pretexts and justifications in saying that Israel has the right to defend itself. This is a deliberate sign. And we would like to say that this right does not apply to Israel because it is the occupying power. It, it, it's occupying the occupied Palestinian territories. And this right does not absolve Israel from committing to the uh, implementation of international law and protecting innocent civilians, women, and children during wars. These tragic attempts are a despicable sign of double standards. Some countries are calling for stopping the aggression, stopping the war, stopping the occupation, and stopping attacks on civilians, and for respecting the international humanitarian law and international law in specific cases. However, and unfortunately and shamelessly, they turn their back to these calls in other situations, especially when they're re related to Palestinians and their right to live in security on their territory, in their independent state, to stop the war crimes against Palestinians. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, the adoption and the implementation of the draft resolution by the General Assembly today, which is specifically calling for a ceasefire, is the only guarantee for saving innocent civilians. Paragraph 6 of the preamble is very balanced and neutral, despite what some might claim. It stresses the need for protecting civilians from both sides in line with the international humanitarian law. The draft resolution is calling in its operative paragraphs upon all parties to commit to the protection of civilians and the release of all hostages and to ensure humanitarian accents. Mr. President, the perpetration of this destructive war will lead to a full-fledged catastrophe. This will unfortunately mean that genocide will be used as a, a tool for war, completely disregarding international law. This will lead the region to a, a, to a full-fledged war, and it will jeopardize the credibility of this international organization. Mr. President, the Arab group calls upon all member states to support the draft resolution before you today. to prevent any double standards and pr to protect international values, to support collective interests 
and to protect international peace and security. We also call upon all delegations to vote against any amendments proposed because they were not discussed with the sponsor countries. This is to protect the balance of the text. The text was drafted so as to go in line with the draft resolution tabled at the Security Council to achieve the main priority, the number one priority, a very clear and specific objective, namely a humanitarian ceasefire. Let us not confuse things because some delegations have proposed amendments, whereas they voted against the draft resolution at the, at the General Assembly that was adopted last year. In this emergency special se session, which called for a humanitarian pause that will eventually lead to a cessation of hostilities. This unveils the, the true objective behind these amendments, namely the continuation of the aggression and the bloodshed. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, what are we all waiting for to stop this fire? What are we waiting for to end this zero-sum war? What are we waiting for to stop the killing and stop the destructive war machine? Can we wait? Can we even wait when the number of civilians killed has gone beyond 18,000, including more than 7,000 children, with one child dying every 10 minutes, and when the number of the injured has exceeded 49,000 people? Excellencies, I am speaking to you, to your conscience today. I am calling upon you to support the draft resolution to stop the bloodshed. Uh, uh, Honorable President, I sincerely ask you, Mr. President, to suspend the debate following the introductions to proceed to take action on the draft resolution A slash ES slash 10 slash L25 without delay given the urgency of the situation on the ground and the importance of a global call for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, with the understanding that the debate would resume immediately after action and the adoption of the resolution and that emergency session 10 would only be temporarily adjourned after the conclusion of the debate. And I do thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Egypt. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Austria to introduce Amendment A stroke ES 10 stroke L 28. Thank you, Mr. President. Excellencies, colleagues, and friends, I have the honor to introduce to you draft amendment L28 proposed by Austria on resolution L27 entitled Protection of Civilians and Upholding Legal and Humanitarian Obligations. We meet today in this emergency special session to address the dire humanitarian situation in Gaza. Austria is deeply concerned by the escalation following the heinous terrorist attacks by Hamas on Israeli civilians on 7 October. As our president stressed earlier, Austria has also continuously underlined the importance of ensuring the protection of all civilians at all times. Every civilian death is one too many. We have also called on more humanitarian aid to reach those in need and have increased our own contributions to humanitarian organizations. We very much welcome the humanitarian pauses and corridors that enable the release of some hostages and the provisions of urgently needed humanitarian aid. The recent escalation of violence started with Hamas' brutal, indiscriminate terrorist attacks across Israel on 7 October, and this deserves to be condemned in the strongest possible terms. 
As any state that suffers such an attack, Israel also has the right to defend its citizens in line with international law and international humanitarian law, and will therefore also support the amendment introduced by the United States. Austria has thoroughly considered the draft resolution before us today. We recognize the efforts by the Arab group to present a short and concise text. And we welcome, we welcome that this text, in comparison to the resolution presented in October, explicitly demands the release of all hostages and also demands humanitarian access. However, this resolution falls short in many ways, including the right of Israel to ensure its citizens are safe and in naming the terrorist group responsible for the taking of hostages. The innocent children, women and men held captive in Gaza have not simply disappeared or lost their way. They were abducted by Hamas. We can't just ignore this fact. The reports of those freed clearly show Hamas brutality and complete disregard for human dignity. It's with this purpose that Austria presented a short, constructive amendment that's based on agreed language from UN Security Council Resolution 2712, adopted on 15 November of this year. This resolution called for the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages held by Hamas and other groups and ensuring immediate humanitarian access. This is the exact language that our amendment that we are proposing today proposes to add. We are here today because there was another veto in the UN Security Council. And just a few weeks ago, the Security Council was able to name Hamas in a resolution that was adopted. The UN General Assembly should also have the courage to do the same. We therefore ask all of you to support the amendment we have put before you and vote yes. If that amendment passes, Austria will, will be able to join others in abstaining on the whole text. We will also continue working with all partners to ensure safety and security for Israelis and Palestinians alike. All of them, Palestinians, Israelis, deserve a peaceful future and the restoration of a political process leading to a two-state solution. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Austria. And I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the United States to introduce the draft amendment in A stroke ES 10 stroke L29. You have the floor, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. President. Colleagues, the last two months have been nothing short of devastating. Devastating for Palestinians who have lost their homes and their loved ones because of a conflict that Hamas set into motion. Devastating for Israelis who still face a barrage of rocket fire even as they continue to reel from Hamas's barbaric attacks on October 7th. Devastating for Jewish and Muslim people around the world who are targeted by rising levels of anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and devastating for all those who dream of a sustainable peace in which Israelis and Palestinians enjoy equal measures of security, dignity, and freedom. That sustainable peace is what the United States wants to work towards. And that is what I believe so many members of this body want to work towards too. And indeed, there are aspects of this resolution that we do support. We agree that the humanitarian situation in Gaza is dire and requires urgent and sustained attention, that civilians desperately need food and water and shelter and medical care, 
that a devastating number of innocent people have been killed and that civilians must be protected, consistent with international humanitarian law. In addition, we support the release of all hostages immediately and unconditionally. Roughly half of those kidnapped on October 7th remain in Gaza. That's over 100 people, subject to, as a number of released hostages have described, hell. And so we encourage you to vote yes on the amendment proposed by Austria, which, like the resolution passed in the Security Council on November 15th, call for Hamas and other groups to release the hostages and to provide humanitarian access to them immediately. Again, we support components of the resolution proposed today. But here's what else we support. We support speaking out with one voice to condemn Hamas for his terrorist actions on October 7th. Why is that so hard? To say unequivocally that murdering babies and gunning down parents in front of their children is horrific, that burning down houses while families shelter inside and taking civilians hostage is abhorrent. It's why today the United States is proposing an amendment that unequivocally rejects and condemns these atrocities. And we urge all members to vote yes and declare that what happened on October 7th is intolerable, period. This is the bare minimum, and it should not be that difficult. In addition, the United States supports immediately addressing the reports of horrific sexual violence unleashed by Hamas on and after October 7th. Over the last 20 years, the UN has repeatedly underscored the need to investigate all reports of conflict-related sexual violence. It's long past time every member apply that same standard to the assaults committed by Hamas. The United States also supports the ICRC having access to hostages to provide medical treatment. We support a resumption of humanitarian pauses, which could happen immediately if Hamas only agreed to release women, wounded, and civilian hostages. We have seen how critical these pauses are to get the hostages out and to give some respite to civilians and humanitarians in Gaza. Look, there's no shortage of rhetoric here in New York, but it's the diplomacy the United States is engaging in on the ground that made that week-long pause possible. It was careful conversation and collaboration with Egypt and Qatar that helped reunite more than 100 hostages with their loved ones and that dramatically expanded humanitarian assistance to Gaza during the break in fighting. Of course, we support even more aid getting into the hands of those who so urgently need it. Over the last week, over the last week and a half, the United States has airlifted more than 90,000 pounds of humanitarian aid to Egypt's border with more on the way. And we're working with Israel, Egypt, the UN, and others to surge humanitarian assistance into Gaza. Israel's decision to open Kerem Shalom for inspections and screening of those humanitarian goods is essential and something we have been working toward in earnest. And Israel's commitment to ensure there's enough fuel to sustain the humanitarian assistance operation, including civilian infrastructure, is also vital. We've made clear to Israel we expect it to honor these commitments and we will hold them to it. Colleagues, there's more we support. We support a more robust deconfliction mechanism to help protect UN and humanitarian personnel, far too many of whom have lost their lives while he heroically working to save innocent people in Gaza. 
We support affirming that Israel, like every single country on earth, has the right and the responsibility to defend its people from acts of terrorism. Because we know that Hamas intends to repeat the horrors of October 7th again and again and again, a senior Hamas official said so himself on television. Indeed, it was Hamas that broke the seven-day pause last month by committing a vicious terror attack in Jerusalem, firing rockets into Israel, and then failing to release the hostages it had pledged to release. Let's be realistic here. This is a terrorist group that no member state would tolerate living next to. So long as Hamas remains driven by its murderous ideology, any ceasefire right now would be temporary at the best and dangerous at worst. Dangerous to Israelis who would be subject to relentless attacks and also dangerous to Palestinians who deserve the chance to build a better future for themselves free from Hamas. A group that hides behind innocent civilians rather than protect them and that co-ops civilian infrastructure to wage conflict. Of course, how Israel defends itself matters. Israel must avoid mass displacement of civilians in the south of Gaza. It must ensure sufficient humanitarian assistance to those who have fled violence. And it must allow civilians in Gaza to return home as soon as conditions allow. We will continue to press at the highest levels for this and for the protection of civilians as Israel pursues legitimate military objectives. Because perhaps most of all, while we cannot support a one-sided Security Council or General Assembly resolution that ignores so much of what we all stand for, we desperately want to see an end to the cycle of unceasing violence. Colleagues, our goal must be to stop the death, the devastation, and the destruction for the long term. And that is simply not a future Hamas wants to see. So as we address this immediate crisis and work to surge humanitarian assistance to the Palestinian people, we must also work to build a foundation for a truly sustainable peace, one where Israelis and Palestinians can live side by side in states of their own so that the next generation and the generations to come need not experience the devastation of the last two months and finally realize freedom, security, and peace. Thank you, Mr. President. I should like to thank the distinguished representative of the United States. The representative of Egypt has moved that the debate on agenda item five be suspended at this stage for the assembly to proceed to the consideration of draft resolution A, ES 10, L27, and that the debate would continue after the action on the draft resolution. It is my understanding that, without setting a precedent and given the urgency of the issue, if the Assembly were to decide to suspend the debate at this stage for the Assembly to proceed to the consideration of draft resolution A, slash ES 10 slash L27 and to continue the debate after the action on the draft resolution. And if the assembly were to adopt the draft resolution subsequently, the 10th emergency special session would be adjourned temporarily following the conclusion of the debate on item five. 
Is there any objection to the motion? I see none. It is so decided. Since there is The Assembly shall now proceed to consider the draft resolution A slash ES ten slash L twenty seven and draft amendments A slash ES ten slash L twenty eight and A slash ES ten L twenty nine. For your information, the draft resolution and draft amendments have closed for e-sponsorship. I now give the floor to the representative of the Secretariat. Thank you, Mr. President. I should like to announce that since the submission of the draft resolution, and in addition to the delegations listed on the L document, the following countries have also become co-sponsors of A stroke ES10 stroke L27. Afghanistan, Angola, Antigua and Barbuda, Azerbaijan, Bahamas, Bangladesh, Barbados, Belarus, Belgium, Belize, Benin, the plurinational state of Bolivia, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Botswana, Brazil, Brunei, Darussalam, Cambodia, the Central African Republic, Chad, Chile, China, Colombia, Congo, Costa Rica, Cuba, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, Dominica, El Salvador, Ethiopia, Fiji, Finland, Gambia, Grenada, Guyana, Honduras, Iceland, Indonesia, Ireland, Jamaica, Kenya, Kyrgyzstan, Lao People's Demo Democratic Republic, Lesotho, Luxembourg, Malaysia, Maldives, Malta, Mexico, Myanmar, Namibia, Nicaragua, Nigeria, Norway, Peru, Philippines, Portugal, the Russian Federation, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, San Marino, Senegal, Singapore, Slovenia, South Africa, Spain, Sri Lanka, Suriname, Tajikistan, Thailand, Timor-Leste, Trinidad and Tobago, Turkey, Turkmenistan, Uganda, Uzbekistan, Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, Vietnam, and Zimbabwe. If any other countries wish to co-sponsor A stroke ES10 stroke L27, please signify by pressing the microphone button now. Guinea-Bissau, Eritrea, Zambia, Mozambique, Mozambique, I already said, so that's it for this one. And then I would like to go to um, L20, L28, and I should like to announce that since the submission of the draft amendment, and in addition to the delegation listed on the L document, the following countries have also become co-sponsors of A stroke, ES10 stroke L28. Albania, Canada, Cyprus, Czechia, Greece, Japan, Lithuania, Montenegro, Ukraine, and the United States of America. If any other countries wish to co-sponsor A stroke ES10 stroke L28, please signify by pressing the microphone button now. United Kingdom, Fiji, Papua New Guinea, Federal Micronesia, that's it. And then I would like to go now to L29. 
I should like to announce that since the submission of the draft amendment and in addition to the delegations listed on the L document, the following countries have also become co-sponsors of A stroke ES10 stroke L29, Albania, Austria, Canada, Cyprus, Czechia, Germany, Greece, Japan, Lithuania, Montenegro, and Ukraine. If any other countries wish to co-sponsor A stroke ES10 stroke L29, please signify by pressing the microphone button now. United Kingdom, Fiji, Micronesia, and Papua New Guinea. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the Secretariat. The Assembly will now proceed to take action on the draft resolution contained in A stroke ES 10 stroke L 27 and amendments thereto contained in A stroke ES 10 stroke L 28 and A stroke ES 10 stroke L29. Delegations wishing to make a statement in explanation of vote before the vote on any of the proposals under this item, including the proposed amendments, are invited to do so now in one intervention. Before giving the floor for explanations of vote before the vote, may I remind delegations that explanations of vote are limited to 10 minutes and should be made by delegations from their seats. I now give the floor to Pakistan. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, let me start by expressing our gratitude to you for having convened this resumption of the emergency special session of the General Assembly, and in particular for your clarion call for an immediate ceasefire in the war that is taking place in Gaza. Mr. President, Pakistan supports the draft resolution submitted by the Arab and Islamic countries in L27. The resolution is identical in its text to the one which was voted upon in the Security Council. And its aim is to seek an immediate humanitarian ceasefire to provide access for humanitarian assistance and to call for the release of all, I repeat, all hostages. This resolution was co-sponsored by over 100 member states when it was submitted in the Security Council. It obtained the affirmative votes of 13 of the 15 council members, but it failed to pass due to the negative vote of a permanent member of the Security Council. Yet, the international community is not without recourse. The UN Charter provides the General Assembly with considerable residual powers and acting under the Uniting for Peace process, we can take action to demand a halt 
to the war which is taking place and killing thousands of people every week. The draft resolution is one we are confident will elicit the support of the vast majority of the UN membership. Pakistan has not co-sponsored this draft resolution. And we have not done so because we reserve the right to submit amendments to ensure that the text which is adopted by the General Assembly is equitable and balanced. And it is a matter, therefore, of deep regret, if not surprise, that some friends of Israel have introduced amendments to once again condemn only one side but exonerate the other. Unlike Canada, I cannot appeal to their sense of equity and justice. But what we can do is to appeal to the sense of humanity, of justice and fairness of the rest of the UN membership. And I'm confident that this entire membership will not agree to place the blame only on Hamas, but not on Israel. That would be unjust, unfair, and inequitable. Mr. President, when you deny people freedom and dignity, when you humiliate and trap them in an open-air prison where you kill them, as if they were beasts, they become very angry and they do to others what was done to them. And therefore, for Austria and my friend from the United States to blame Hamas in their amendments is not equitable, is not just. The blame, if it's to be placed, has to be placed on both parties, and especially on Israel. <clears throat> Mr. President, with the end of the pause, the skies over Gaza are filled with projectiles of death, attack helicopters, drones, artillery shells, tank shells, mortars, bombs, missiles. Israel has dropped 25,000 tons of explosives on Gaza, nearly the equivalent of the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Israel's goal is not only to erase Hamas. This is a war against the Palestinian people. Israel's goal is to erase not only a people, but the entire idea of Palestine. Its campaign is a carbon copy of the massive campaigns of racial slaughter by other settler colonial regimes in history. Mr. President, over 18,000 Palestinians in Gaza have been killed, another 42,000 wounded, and more than 1.8 million people, over 80% of Gaza's population, have been driven from their homes. Thousands are missing, buried under the rubble. And yet Israel is not deterred. Is this any form of legitimate self-defense when you can kill 18,000 civilians with impunity and enjoy the protection in the Security Council against action. Therefore, I would appeal to 
all the membership to see this one-sided slaughter that is taking place. If Hamas is named and not Israel, you will provide a justification to the Israeli war machine to continue its roulette, roulette wheel of death. I believe that this is not the intention of the membership of the United Nations to justify, to give a justification for the genocide that is taking place. I would therefore, on behalf of my delegation, on behalf of all the Arab countries, on behalf of the OIC, appeal to all the membership to vote against the amendments proposed in L28 by Austria and L29 by the United States. In case these amendments are adopted, Pakistan will submit sub-amendments to these in order to restore balance, in order to name Israel as the perpetrator of the mass crimes that are taking place in Gaza today. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Pakistan, and I now call on the representative of Israel to take the floor. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, again, we find ourselves about to vote upon yet another hypocritical resolution. Not only does this resolution fail to condemn Hamas for their crimes against humanity, it doesn't even mention Hamas at all. This is a resolution that will only prolong the death and destruction in the region. That is precisely what a ceasefire means. Colleagues, on October 6th, there was a ceasefire, and it was abruptly violated, not by Israel, but by 3,000 Hamas Nazis who invaded my country, raping women, beheading babies, burning families alive, and deliberately exterminating innocent civilians like insects. What would your countries do if you were in Israel's shoes? Call for a ceasefire? What would Moscow do? Beijing? Istanbul? How would you respond? Everyone here knows exactly. On December 1st, there was another pause in place. And again, it was violently ended by Hamas ISIS, who refused to release women held hostage and continued to fire rockets and missiles on our town and cities. Hamas raped women, committed heinous acts of sexual violence, took women and girls hostage, and is not only refusing to release them, but is also refusing the Red Cross's access to them. There are no war crimes more heinous than the atrocities Hamas committed, and those that support this resolution are giving the terrorists a free pass. A ceasefire means one thing and one thing only, ensuring the, the survival of Hamas ensuring the survival of genocidal terrorists committed to the annihilation of Israel and Jews. This is no secret. Hamas's charter makes this clear, and Hamas leaders have publicly stated that October 7th was just a rehearsal. They have declared that they will repeat their atrocities again and again until Israel ceases to exist. So why would anyone want to aid Hamas in continuing their rule of terror and actualizing their sata satanic agenda? We all know that the so-called humanitarian ceasefire in this resolution has nothing to do with humanity. Israel is already taking every measure, every measure to facilitate the entry of humanitarian aid into Gaza. Thousands of aid trucks have entered with tens of thousands of tons of humanitarian aid. Field hospitals have been constructed. Floating hospital ships have been docked. 
And the only reason more aid is not entering Gaza is because UN bodies refuse, refuse to solve the logistical difficulties preventing all aid trucks waiting in Rafah from entering. If this resolution's true intent was humanitarian aid, it would be focused on improving the UN's logistical capabilities, not on a ceasefire. A ceasefire will only benefit the terrorists that steal, they steal the humanitarian aid for themselves. It will not benefit the people of Gaza. Is this your solution? What will happen the day after the ceasefire? Will this bring peace and stability to the region? Of course not. A ceasefire is a death sentence for countless more Israelis and Gazans. By voting in favor of this resolution, you are supporting the survival of jihadist terror and the continued suffering of people of Gaza. The exploitation of the Palestinians has made the UN a moral stain on humanity. Why are you continuing to allow them to make the United Nations irrelevant? If this body's intentions are just, why don't you just start by demanding a ceasefire only from those responsible for violating the past too? Why don't you hold the rapists and child murderers accountable? The time has come to put the blame where it belongs, on the shoulders of the Hamas monsters. But this resolution does not even condemn Hamas. It doesn't even mention Hamas. I honestly don't know how can someone look in the mirror and support a resolution that doesn't condemn Hamas and doesn't even mention Hamas by name. So at the very last, I urge you to vote for adding a condemnation of Hamas to the resolution. But you know what? I have an idea. If you want a real ceasefire, here is the right address. This is the phone number of Hamas's office in Gaza. You can all call, plus 970-599-3765, and ask for Ikhya Sinwar. Tell Hamas to put down their arms, turn themselves in, and return our hostages. This will bring a complete ceasefire that will last forever. So why are you not doing this? Why are you not holding Hamas accountable? Ironically, today is the United Nations International Day of Neutrality, the day on which the UN reminds itself to be an impartial mediator in de-escalating conflict. Ignoring the war crimes of genocidal terrorists on today of all days, this body further proves its utter irrelevance. What a disgrace. But this resolution's absurdity goes further than protecting genocidal terrorists. This resolution is a written paradox. On the one hand, it calls for a ceasefire. Yet, on the other hand, it calls for the release of all hostages, all. Have you forgotten who you are dealing with? Have you forgotten that Hamas, the terror organization holding the hostages, has zero respect for international law? A useless resolution will not secure the release of hostages. In fact, Mr. President, a ceasefire will only ensure that their suffering is extended at the hands of the terrorists. Hamas does not respond to General Assembly resolutions. Hamas responds only to threats on its survival. Continuing Israel's operation in Gaza is the only way any hostages will be released. This disgraceful resolution serves only one purpose, to try to tie Israel's hands and allow Hamas to continue its reign of terror. Colleagues, this institution was founded in the wake of the Holocaust. It was established to prevent such atrocities from ever happening again. But by supporting this resolution, you are doing exactly the opposite. You are voting in favor of a genocidal jihadist organization. Mr. President, unlike our enemies, Israel believes in life and peace, not brazen violence. No piece of paper, especially one that is adopted by a biased, politicized majority, will prevent Israel from defending itself against those that seek our destruction. Israel is fighting a war for her future. There is not a single member state here, not a single member state here, that would act differently in a similar situation. A ceasefire only serves to prolong Hamas's reign of terror, 
So I urge all member states to vote against this resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of the State of Israel for his statement, and I now give the floor to the representative of South Africa on behalf of the African states. Thank you, Mr. President. I am delivering the statement, explanation of vote before the vote on behalf of my country, South Africa. We thank you for convening this emergency special session of the United Nations General Assembly, which has been called because of yet another failure of the Security Council to fulfill its mandate. We thank the Arab group and the OIC respectively for requesting the resumption of the 10th emergency special session of the General Assembly. On 6 December, the Secretary General took the initiative to invoke Article 99 of the UN Charter, bringing to the attention of the Security Council a matter which, in his opinion, may aggravate existing threats to the maintenance of international peace and security. South Africa commends the Secretary General for taking this initiative, and we remain steadfast in calling for an immediate, comprehensive ceasefire to assess the needs on the ground, allowing for the full opening of all humanitarian corridors to grant much needed aid and basic services to reach those in need. We therefore emphasize the urgent implementation of General Assembly resolutions to realize this and alleviate the suffering of Palestinians in desperate need of relief aid. The Secretary General's initiative was necessary in the context of the inability of the Council to, at the very least, call for a humanitarian ceasefire. The international institutions created at the end of the Second World War, including the United Nations, human rights instruments, and judicial mechanisms, were established so that history would not repeat the cruelty experienced during the war. Yet, by failure to act, to call for an end to the loss of civilian life, it has become clear that there is a selective application of the international instruments and the utilization of some of these mechanisms for attaining narrow interests. This has resulted in calling to questions the effectiveness of the system. As members of the General Assembly, this emergency special session presents an opportunity for us to illustrate that the organization that was created to give hope for peace is not tone deaf to the suffering of the most vulnerable. The ESS is an opportunity for us to illustrate that we are able to take on the responsibility entrusted to us by the UN Charter and international law and call for an immediate ceasefire and not condone war in the name of self-defense. The events of the past six weeks in Gaza have illustrated that Israel is acting contrary to its obligation in terms of the Genocide Convention. As a UN member state, and owing to South Africa's painful past experience of a system of apartheid, this impresses on us as member states to take action in accordance with international law. 
Mr. President, an issue we cannot also ignore is the failure of member states of this organization to abide by the decision taken on 27 October 2023. South Africa was among more than two-thirds of the member states that call for an immediate ceasefire at the General Assembly. This has been ignored. We cannot proclaim the importance of international law and the importance of the UN Charter in some situations and not in others, as if the rule of law only applies to a select few. For international law and our moral obligations to be credible, it should be uniformly applied and not be selective. We have all signed the Charter. Let us commit to and respect decisions taken in accordance with the Charter. Mr. President, the lack of meaningful action from the United Nations indicates that more than ever before, reform of the system of global governance so that it is fair, equitable, and has the capacity to respond to the needs of all persons in situations of threat and harm is urgently needed. The system that is needed should not just be a tool for the most powerful countries of the world, but one that provides protection for the most vulnerable. The inadequacy of the UN Security Council, which has a mandate derived from the UN Charter for the maintenance of international peace and security, has become glaring. The Security Council, due to aggravated politicization, has not at the very least been able to call for a humanitarian ceasefire to allow for much needed humanitarian supplies to go to those that need it the most. This once again demonstrates the urgent need for the reform of this body. Mr. President, South Africa support the GA draft resolution L27 being considered this afternoon. Protection of civilians and upholding legal and humanitarian obligations. I thank you. We have heard the last speaker in explanation of vote before the vote. Before proceeding to take a decision on draft resolution, I wish to address the question concerning the majority required for the adoption of the draft resolution. In light of Article 18, Paragraphs 2 and 3 of the Charter of the United Nations, is there any objection to taking action on Draft Resolution A-ES-10-L27 by a two-thirds majority of the members present and voting? I see no objection. The two-thirds majority of members present and voting is therefore required for the adoption of the draft resolution. The two-thirds majority of members present and voting is therefore also required for the adoption of the amendments to the draft resolution. Before we proceed to take a decision on draft resolution A stroke ES 10 stroke L 27, in accordance with rule 90 of the rules of procedure, the assembly shall first take a decision on draft amendments A stroke ES 10 stroke L 28 and A stroke ES 10 stroke L29, one by one. We now turn to draft amendment AES10 L28. A recorded vote has been requested. We shall now begin the voting process. Those in favor of, amend of draft amendment A, 
ES10 slash L28, please signify those against and abstentions. The General Assembly is now voting on draft amendment A stroke ES10 stroke L28. Will all delegations confirm that their votes are correctly reflected on the screen? The voting has been completed. Please lock the machine. The result of the vote is as follows. Eighty nine in favor, sixty one against, and twenty abstentions. Having failed to obtain the required two thirds majority, draft amendment A stroke ES ten stroke L twenty eight is not adopted. We now turn to draft amendment A, stroke ES10, stroke L29. A recorded vote has been requested. We shall now begin the voting process. Those in favor of draft amendment A, stroke ES10, stroke L29, please signify those against and abstentions. The General Assembly is now voting on draft amendment A stroke ES10 stroke L29. Will all delegations confirm that their votes are correctly reflected on the screen? The voting has been completed. Please lock the machine. The result of the vote is as follows. 84 in favor, 62 against, 25 abstentions. Having failed to obtain the required two thirds majority, draft amendment A stroke ES10 stroke L29 is not adopted. Since draft amendments A stroke ES10 stroke L28 and A stroke ES10 stroke L29 were not adopted, we shall proceed to take action on draft resolution A ES10 stroke L27. The assembly will now take a decision on draft resolution A stroke ES10 stroke L27 entitled Protection of Civilians and Upholding Legal and Humanitarian Obligations. A recorded vote has been requested. We shall now begin the voting process. Those in favor of draft resolution A stroke ES10 stroke L27, please signify those against and abstentions. The General Assembly is now voting on draft resolution A stroke ES10 stroke L27 entitled Protection of Civilians and Upholding, uh, and Upholding Legal and Humanitarian Obligations. Will all delegations confirm that their votes are correctly reflected on the screen? The voting has been completed, and please lock the machine. The 
the result of the vote is as follows. 153 in favor, 10 against, 23 abstentions. Draft resolution A stroke ES 10 stroke L27 has been adopted. Before giving the floor for explanations of vote after the vote, may I remind delegations that explanations of vote are limited to 10 minutes and should be made by delegations from their seats. I now give the floor to the representative of Belgium. Monsieur le Président. Mr. President, the Second Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Mr. Doug Hammarskjöld, did one day say that the United Nations Organization was not established to, to take us to heaven, but rather to prevent us from sliding into hell. And unfortunately, that's exactly what uh, the people of Gaza are waiting from us today. Colleagues, it is uh, with the spirit displayed by the Secretary General when he invoked Article 99 of the Charter that Belgium voted today in favor of the draft resolution that was submitted to us for consideration. With your permission, I will now concentrate on the three following points. First of all, this vote in favor of protecting civilians and in international law, including the international humanitarian law, is a strong appeal to counter the risk of the collapse of humanitarian uh, landscape in Gaza. And that is why Belgium joined the majority of members of the organization who support uh, the immediate humanitarian ceasefire, which could uh, on, in the long term lead to the end of hostilities. We also joined the, those even more numerous who are asking for an immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, as well as an immediate and unimpeded humanitarian access. The work of UN agencies also has to be facilitated and vital infrastructures restored. We ask for a continued opening of the Kerem Shalom crossing point so as to facilitate and accelerate the vital supplies. Any deliberate impediment to the supplies of, of aid has to end. Colleagues, this humanitarian consideration should not be interpre interpreted as an appeal to end uh, our fight against Hamas and other terrorist groups. The solution will not come from extrem extremists and other enemies of peace. Their actions increase the risk that the conflict will spill over in the West Bank and in the region. This has to end. Belgium's support in this regard the accountability and the adoption of coercive measures vis-a-vis -vis the terrorists, similar to the ones that were passed on the 8th of December by the EU against uh, Hamas officials and against uh, violent, violent extremists. Belgium supported the American amendment with this in mind, hoping that its adoption will help us um, make an important step, for, step forward here in New York. Colleagues. We now have to, and this is my third point, have to collectively contribute towards a conducive environment to a negotiated solution to the Palestinian question, an environment which could have a political horizon, which will um, end with a two-state solution. We'll Belgium will support constructive actors whose action will bring us close to this goal. We therefore support organizing um, in due time of an international conference on peace. And that was a very reason for the Peace Day effort uh, by uh, organized jointly by the European Union and the League of Arab States. Dear colleagues, we need to work collectively so as to, in the short term, term have a humanitarian ceasefire, in the medium term put an end to terrorist acts and violent extremists, and in the long term we need to work together to have a lasting solution to this conflict, the kind of solution which would guarantee to Israel the possibility to live in peace and security and which will realize finally the right of the Palestinians to self-determination. I thank you.
the name of God, the merciful, the compassionate, Mr. President, my delegation voted for draft resolution today in the hope that these tragic circumstances and suffering caused by an inhumane military attack by the uh, occupation Israeli forces stop. Mr. President, allow me at the outset to thank you for responding to our call to resume the 10th emergency special session, which is held because of the Security Council, which has failed once again to adopt a draft resolution for to, to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. We are meeting for the second time in the General Assembly in light of very difficult and more painful circumstances as the killing displacement campaign continues and as the violations of uh, resolutions of international legitimacy and international law continue. While the Security Council is unable to take any preventive measures before this campaign and before these violations, and as uh, international uh, impunity continues, the targeting continues to target uh, hospitals, uh, schools, uh, and resident buildings, leaving thousands of innocent civilians uh, elderly women and children death. The number of uh, civilian death is more than 18,000, including women and children. This uh, exacerbates the tragic humanitarian situation in Gaza day after day and proves that the international community was unable to stop this catastrophe. My delegation stresses that these serious humanitarian circumstances are a result of the continued escalation. They are, uh, they are not uh, justified. Civilians must be protected. This is a main priority, and no compromise shall be made regarding it. Failing to achieve this priority will only exacerbate this catastrophe, which is uh, which falls uh, upon Israel and the international community. Ladies and gentlemen, the Arab Islamic Conference held in Riyadh on the 11th of November with the participation of all member states uh, in the OIC, adopted resolutions representing the aspirations of our people to stop the bloodshed and ensure that humanitarian assistance is delivered, to stop the violations, to overcome this unjustified suffering in Palestine and stand with the Palestinian people so that they can achieve their legitimate aspirations, so that they can re recover their occupied territories and establish their independent state. It calls upon the international community and institutions to shoulder its responsibilities without any uh, failure. The tragic uh, circumstances in Palestine require us to take immediate action to immediately stop military hostilities and provide protection to civilians and to ensure the release of detainees and hostages in line with international law and our uh, principles of common humanity. It is important to find a peaceful solution to stop this violent uh, violence in the region. Mr. President. As some members of the international community did not support the ceasefire and did not provide sufficient humanitarian assistance, we we express our uh, dismay that the Palestinian people are unable to live a dignified life. Once again, we call for a ceasefire to stop the bloodshed, to protect civilians, and to stop the collective punishment inflicted upon the people of Gaza. These are the priorities. We will continue to work for peace, and we will continue to call for the implementation and enforcement of international um, instruments. The current crisis is a result of the failure of the international community to ensure the two-state solution. It allowed Israel to continue working with impunity 
This is what led to the current crisis, and this is why we call upon the international community to shoulder its responsibility to immediately stop this war and stop the bloodshed. We stress the need to reach a comprehensive and just solution for the Palestinian question in line with the Arab Peace Initiative, the two-state solution, and the establishment of a Palestinian state with Jerusalem as a capital. In conclusion, we thank all those who supported the draft resolution that was just adopted by a huge majority. This reflects the international position to compel the implement to, uh, compel, to uh, call for the enforcement of this resolution. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of Saudi Arabia. And I now invite the representative of India to take the floor. Mr. President, India has voted in favor of the resolution just adopted by the General Assembly. The situation that this August body has been deliberating upon has many dimensions. There is the terrorist attack in Israel on 7 October and the concern for the hostages taken at that time. There is an enormous humanitarian crisis and the large-scale loss of civilian lives, especially of women and children. There is the issue of observing international humanitarian law in all circumstances. And there is the endeavor to find a peaceful and lasting two-state solution to the long-standing Palestine question. Our challenge in this extraordinarily difficult time is to strike the right balance. The gravity and complexity of what the international community faces is underlined by the Secretary General invoking Article 99 of the Charter of the United Nations. We therefore welcome the fact that the international community has been able to find a common ground to address the multiple challenges facing the region right now. Thank you. I thank the representative of India, and I now give the floor to the representative of Bulgaria. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Bulgaria is gravely alarmed by the catastrophic situation of civilians in Gaza and reiterates its call for continued rapid, safe, and unhindered humanitarian access and aid to reach those in need through all necessary measures. We underline the utmost importance of ensuring the protection of all civilians at all times in line with international humanitarian law and deplore all loss of civilian life. Every lost life is one too many. However, we must also recognize that the heinous and indiscriminate terrorist attacks of Hamas across uh, Israel, which we condemn in the strongest terms, brought unimaginable suffering of civilians. There is no justification for terror, and Israel has the inherent right to defend itself in accordance with international law and international humanitarian law. Unfortunately, the resolution that was just adopted falls short of recognizing that, and for those reasons, Bulgaria had to abstain on it. Thank you. I thank the representative of Bulgaria, and now invite the representative of Germany to take the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. We would like to thank all member states involved, Egypt in particular, for their work in this very important issue and for keeping the humanitarian situation in Gaza in our joint focus. We support the objective of the resolution to reduce violence and human suffering and to enable unhindered humanitarian access. We are saddened by every life that has been lost in this conflict and express our condolences to all victims and their families, Israeli, Palestinian, and UN staff. Nevertheless, we cannot endorse a text which does not condemn the heinous acts of terror and violations of international humanitarian law committed by Hamas against Israel since October 7th, including the horrific acts of sexual violence against Israeli women and girls. 
We condemn these acts in the strongest possible terms, and so should all member states. It has been more than two months that Hamas continues to attack Israel with rockets on a daily basis and uses Palestinian civilians as human shields. We reiterate our call on Hamas and others to immediately release all remaining hostages and lay down their weapons. We commend efforts undertaken by the United States, Qatar, and Egypt to secure the release of hostages. Mr. President, how can we possibly demand a humanitarian ceasefire while attacks by Hamas continue? Israel has a right to defend itself in accordance with international law and international humanitarian law. At the same time, we will continue to call for humanitarian pauses and unhindered humanitarian access so that assistance can reach on those in need. Civilians need to be protected during conflict. It breaks our hearts to witness the immense suffering of the Palestinian population, especially women and children. Germany supports the UN Secretary General's efforts to act to mitigate a humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza and the collapse of the humanitarian system. We will continue to do our utmost to help alleviate the suffering of the civilian population in Gaza, including by supporting humanitarian relief efforts. We will remain committed to supporting the Palestinian people now and in the future. Mr. President, we regret that the resolution before us does not acknowledge Hamas' primary responsibility for starting this terrible conflict with its horrific attack on 7th of October. It is against this backdrop that Germany abstained in today's vote. Mr. President, in the UN we speak the language of international law, of humanity, of peaceful coexistence. This is what unites us. We all must step our efforts to work towards a meaningful peace process, allowing both Israelis and Palestinians to live side by side in peace and security in two independent states and in secure borders. I thank you. I thank the representative of Germany, and I now invite the Republic of Korea to take the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. The Republic of Korea voted in favor of the amendment proposed by Austria as the language clarifies Hamas and other groups that are holding the hostages. We also voted in favor of the amendment proposed by the United States as the language clearly, clearly condemns the terrorist attacks by Hamas on the 7th of October and the taking of hostages. Thanks to the testimonies by hostages released during the recent seven-day pause, we learned more details about the horrific terrorist attacks by Hamas. We once again condemn in the strongest terms the heinous terrorist attacks by Hamas against Israel and urge immediate release of all the remaining hostages. We believe that Israel has the right and the duty to protect itself and its citizens. But irrespective of nationality, gender, age, ethnicity, or faith, all civilians must be protected. We urge all parties to take measures to protect civilians in accordance with their obligations under the international humanitarian law. Therefore, we voted in favor of the resolution proposed by Egypt, considering that an unextended humanitarian pause that can be durably maintained is essential to save the lives of Palestinian civilians and hostages in Gaza. The current humanitarian situation is calamitous, and we need time to save civilian lives and guarantee full rapid, safe, and unhindered humanitarian access for civilians in Gaza. Far too many civilian lives have been lost, and those alive are also suffering from the lack of requisite humanitarian assistance and essential services. The cessation of hostilities is also needed to facilitate the release of all the remaining hostages held in Gaza. Mr. President, this vicious cycle in the Middle East must stop. And now is the time to redouble our efforts to realize the two-state solution. Sustainable peace in the region can only be achieved 
through sincere negotiations based on the two-state solution with both Israelis and Palestinians living side by side in peace within secure and recognized borders consistent with international law and relevant UN resolutions. We hope the UN can speak with one voice to this end. As an incoming Security Council member, the Republic of Korea is determined to help achieve the common aspiration of the world for peace in the Middle East. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the representative of South Korea, and now I invite the representative of Cyprus to take the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. This emergency special session has been called due to the alarming humanitarian situation in Gaza. Mr. President, we, not, we unequivocally reject and condemn the inconceivable terrorist attacks by Hamas that commenced on 7th October, as well as the deplorable taking of hostages. We demand the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages held, as well as ensuring immediate humanitarian access to them. To this end, we supported the respective amendments because this crisis was not born in a vacuum. We deeply regret that these amendments did not pass. Mr. President, the end of November humanitarian pause allowed for the release of some of the hostages held by Hamas and other terrorist groups and for greater loads of emergency relief to enter into Gaza. However, many of the hostages still remain captive and the colossal humanitarian needs in Gaza are, increasingly by, are increasing by the hour. It is for this reason that we voted in favor of this resolution. Palestinian and Israeli civilians must be protected in accordance with international humanitarian law. International law, including international humanitarian law, must be fully respected. We are also working with partners towards ensuring humanitarian assistance enter Gaza via a dedicated one-way maritime corridor. Given the gravity of the humanitarian crisis, we hope to complement current routes primarily through RAFA to assist in alleviating the suffering. Mr. President, ultimately, the only way forward is reviving the Middle East peace process on the basis of a two-state solution in line with the UN resolutions. We stand ready to support this aim as it is the only way to ensure conditions of sustainable security and stability equally for Israelis and Palestinians alike, and it is a crucial step towards fostering stability in the Middle East as a whole. I thank you. I thank the representative of Cyprus and I now invite the representative of Australia to take the floor. Mr. President, Australia approaches, uh, appreciates the Arab group bringing forward this resolution. Australia is gravely concerned about the dire humanitarian situation in Gaza. Human suffering is widespread and unacceptable. Civilians who fled northern Gaza are now being pushed further south, and as the conflict spreads south, there are increasingly few spaces, safe spaces to go. The world has witnessed a harrowing number of civilian deaths, including children. This must not continue. Australia again calls for safe, unimpeded and sustained humanitarian access in Gaza and safe passage for civilians. We acknowledge the gravity of the Secretary General's invoking Article 99. Australia welcomed the humanitarian pause agreed by the parties in November and brokered by the United States, Egypt and Qatar. This resolution, calling for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire, is the world urging these pauses be resumed so urgent humanitarian aid can flow. Australia is part of that call and we support this resolution. We see such pauses as critical steps on a path to a sustainable and permanent ceasefire. But such a ceasefire cannot be one-sided. Australia also supported the amendments proposed by Austria and the United States because we believe this resolution should have gone further by unequivocally condemning Hamas as the perpetrators of the 7 October attack on innocent Israeli civilians. That terrorist attack precipitated this crisis this critical flat fact should be clearly recorded in this place. Australia unequivocally condemns the ongoing acts of terror by Hamas, its use of human shields, 
and its use of civilian infrastructure to launch attacks on Israel. Australia reiterates our demand for Hamas to release all remaining hostages immediately and unconditionally. In defending itself, Israel must respect international law, including international humanitarian law. Civilians and civilian infrastructure, including hospitals, must be protected. Hamas must be defeated and dismantled, but this cannot be without account for the protection and welfare of Palestinian civilians. President, Australia supports Palestinians' right to self-determination. There must not be forced displacement of Palestinians from Gaza, physical reoccupation of Gaza, any reduction in territory, or any use of siege or blockade. And Gaza must never again be used as a platform for terrorism. We reaffirm that settlements are illegal under international law and a serious obstacle to lasting peace. And we recommit ourselves to working with any sincere partner toward that just and enduring peace in the form of a two-state solution where Israelis and Palestinians can live securely within internationally recognized borders. Thank you. I thank the representative of Australia, and I now invite the representative of the Kingdom of the Netherlands to take the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank you for reconvening this emergency special session. I also wish to take this opportunity to express our unwavering support for the Secretary General of the United Nations. We take his call on the humanitarian situation in Gaza, including his decision to invoke Article 99 of the UN Charter very seriously. The current situation in Gaza is horrendous. Too many innocent lives have been taken. The scale of suffering and destruction in Gaza due to Israel's bombardments is heart-wrenching. Medical facilities are under extreme duress. The collective suffering of the people in Gaza, among which many children, should stop. We mourn the loss of lives of all civilians, including journalists, UN personnel, humanitarian workers, and medical staff. Our thoughts are with their loved ones. Urgent and immediate action is needed to halt the unfolding humanitarian catastrophe in Gaza. 80% of the population is internally displaced. There is no effective protection for civilians, and they have nowhere to go. No place in Gaza is safe now. The humanitarian system is on the verge of collapse with the risk of starvation and outbreak of infectious diseases. The resolution contains important messages in this regard, as well as the essential demand to release all hostages. Therefore, we worked hard to reach an agreement on the text that would enable a vote in favor of this resolution. However, the lack of clarity on the temporary nature of a humanitarian ceasefire in the text creates confusion. We tried to change the text accordingly, but our proposals were unfortunately not accepted as the text was not open for further negotiations. The resolution further lacks a reference to the heinous acts by Hamas. Based on these considerations, the Kingdom of the Netherlands abstained on the resolution. Mr. President, the harsh reality is that attacks from Hamas and elsewhere in the region continue. Case in point are the repeated Houthi missile attacks targeting Israel and vessels in the Red Sea. Israel's continued need to defend itself against continuous attacks therefore still stands with respect for international humanitarian law. The Kingdom of the Netherlands remains shocked at the heinous terrorist attacks perpetrated by Hamas on October 7th, and we condemn it in the strongest possible terms. The spiral of violence that followed has seen too many civilian casualties. It is of the essence that both parties do everything to ensure that civilians are protected in line with international humanitarian law. We need to see more urgent action. 
Mr. President, the way Israel implements self-defense matters. We consistently and explicitly urge Israel to demonstrate restraint, and we consistently stress the importance of proportionality and necessity in its current operation, operations. In that light, we expect of Israel, one, that it does everything to ensure that civilians are protected. This is an obligation and a necessity. Two, to ensure that direct and unhindered humanitarian assistance gets to the people of Gaza. This is an obligation on the international law. Now that the fighting has resumed and needs in Gaza are es escalating, decreasing aid influx is unacceptable. The decision to open Keram Shalom for the inspection of humanitarian aid trucks is a much needed step in the right direction, but much more is needed. Aid needs to pass through, including fuel and medical supplies. These goods also need to reach all those in need in Gaza. Three, and we expect Israel to ensure that humanitarian workers are able to work in Gaza safely and without constraints. This is also an obligation under international law. Four, we also reiterate that settler violence is completely unacceptable. Under occupation law, the IDF has an obligation to actively protect Palestinian civilians from violence. Israel needs to act decisively and urgently to stop the settler violence and illegal annexations in the West Bank, which further destabilizes the situation in the region. In this context, we urgently call for immediate, new, substantial, frequent humanitarian pauses. The ending of suffering of innocent people is an obligation. This conflict needs a political solution in accordance with international law. I thank you. I thank the representative of the Kingdom of the Netherlands and I now invite the representative of the Islamic Republic of Iran to take the floor. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Mr. President, the situation before us is quite clear. One member state, a permanent member of Security Council, misusing its unequal authority of veto power and in clear disregard to the united will of international community has decided to stand with Israeli criminal regime and materially enable this regime in its ongoing massacre against civilians in Gaza. The United States blatantly opposing a ceasefire which means prescribing war violence and eventually more death for children and women in Gaza. As highlighted by Secretary General in his recent briefing before the Security Council, no place in Gaza is safe and there is an imminent risk of a total collapse of the humanitarian support system. The Secretary General, using his authority under Article 99 of the United Nations Charter, has urgently called upon the Security Council to intervene and bring a halt to the Israeli regime's attack in Gaza. This call received full support from the international community. The United Nations Charter initially predicted the power of veto as a tool to maintain and ensure international peace and security. However, today, this authority is frequently abused to obstruct the very establishment of peace and security. This trend is a clear alarm, signaling the imperative need to eliminate such discriminatory practices. Mr. President, over the past two months, we have witnessed a violent act of aggression carried out by Israeli armed forces in Gaza Strip, resulting in the death of more than 18,000 Palestinian civilians. The situation on ground entails all risk factors for genocide and definition under Article 2 of Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide which bear responsibility for all member states to impede and prevent its occurrence. This regime had been pursuing a scorched earth policy by deliberately 
destroying infrastructure and residential building in manner that there is no place to live in the Gaza. These barbaric crimes must be addressed by international community in a decisive manner and Palestinians must be protected internationally. Considering the major failure of the Security Council in addressing the situation in ground, we remind responsibility of all member states on the international law regarding the need to prevent genocide and war crimes and reiterate our call for regional and national measures that in any practical way could hinder the violence and deal with the current situation. In conclusion, my delegation has voted in favor of resolution considering the urgency of the situation and a strong need to address the dire humanitarian condition in Palestine and would like to put on record that <clears throat> our support for the resolution is without prejudice to our long-standing and constant national position on issues related to the question of Palestine and non-recognition of the Israeli regime. Today's vote by the General Assembly is a victory for blood of brave martyrs of the Gaza over the Israeli's war machine and clearly indicate international will. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Islamic Republic of Iran. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Slovenia. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Slovenia co-sponsored the resolution presented in the Security Council, and we followed suit today in the General Assembly. We voted in favor of the resolution and we also supported the amendments which in our view would contribute to more accurately reflecting the complex situation on the ground. Mr. President, it has been more than two months of human suffering, physical destruction, and collective trauma across Israel and the occupied territory. Words seem to have been said in vain as we continue to observe one of the darkest hours for this organization unfolding in front of our eyes. I would like to focus on three elements which brought us here today. The letter by the Secretary General, the letter by UNRWA Commissioner General, and the veto cast in the Security Council. Firstly, I wish to express our firm support to the Secretary General and the United Nations in their efforts to prevent further deterioration of an already dire situation on the ground. The scale of killing, suffering, and destruction reported have been a clear testament that at this stage only one step is, only one step is sufficient, a declaration of a humanitarian ceasefire. Let us be clear, there can be no justification for the brutal terrorist attack of Hamas on Israel, and we strongly condemn it, including reported sexual violence. We repeat our call for immediate and unconditional release of all hostages. What we are witnessing in Gaza are clear violations of international humanitarian law and human rights law. We remain appalled by reports of attacks on civilians and on schools, hospitals, UN facilities, and other civilian objects, and a high number of civilian casualties. People do not have access to the most basic provisions needed for survival. There is an increased risk of a breakdown of public order. Almost two million people have been displaced. Any further mass displacements should be prevented. Slovenia remains concerned over the, over the escalation of settler violence in the West Bank and the announced additional expansions of illegal settlements. Settlement activities are illegal, erode the viability of the two-state solution, and undermine the prospect for a just, lasting, and comprehensive peace. We are deeply worried about the spillover and increased potential for the destabilization of the wider region, and we call for restraint. Secondly, we would like to express our deepest concern over the situation of UNRWA, its severely limited ability to implement its mandate, and the circumstances in which the humanitarian community is working on the ground. Many of the humanitarian workers have been displaced and are themselves in need of humanitarian assistance. People serving humanity have been failed by humanity. UNRWA represents a glimmer of hope to thousands of Gazans and to thousands more in the West Bank and the neighboring countries. Its potential collapse would mean humanitarian assistance in Gaza would no longer be possible at a scale that is needed. 
Slovenia commends the work of humanitarian agencies and their person personnel in Gaza who continue to provide assistance and protection to the people, often at a great sacrifice, paying the ultimate price with their own lives. We express our condolences over the high number of victims among the UNRWA staff. Thirdly, we deeply regret the inability of the UN Security Council to address this situation. While recognizing efforts of many countries engaging in diplomacy on the ground and commending the adoption of the Resolution 2712, we must note that the Secretary General has clearly stated that current conditions are making it impossible for meaningful humanitarian support on the ground. The Security Council should therefore step in and support rapid, sustained, unimpeded and safe access for humanitarian aid equipment and personnel to Gaza and its distribution within Gaza. This can only be done by a humanitarian ceasefire that will lead to a truly permanent ceasefire. This brings us to the need for a resumption of a meaningful political process, which will lead to the two-state solution with Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace and security. Slovenia has and will continue to support initiatives that reinforce the Middle East peace process we therefore strongly support the organization of a peace conference as soon as possible. To conclude, we would like to thank both the Secretary General and the UNRWA Commissioner General and many other parts of the UN system for conveying clear messages to the membership. Never again is now. And this is why Slovenia clearly supports the call for a humanitarian ceasefire. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Slovenia. I now give a floor to a distinguished representative of New Zealand. Thank you, Mr. President. New Zealand welcomes the adoption of today's resolution. In relation to the amendments put forward by the United States and Austria, we wish to register our disappointment that they did not pass. The amendments would have introduced elements which New Zealand felt would have benefited the resolution and which remain important to New Zealand's position on this terrible conflict. New Zealand has consistently acknowledged Israel's right to defend itself against Hamas's terrorist attacks. We unequivocally condemn these attacks and reiterate that all remaining hostages being held by Hamas must be released immediately and unconditionally. In defending itself, Israel must respect international law, including international humanitarian law. C civilians and civilian infrastructure, including hospitals, must be protected. New Zealand is gravely concerned about the impact of this conflict on civilians. The loss of life and level of suffering in Gaza is utterly devastating. Over a million people with nowhere to go, outbreaks of disease, and overwhelming challenges with nutrition, sanitation, and overcrowding. There is simply not enough water, food, fuel, and shelter. Critical humanitarian assistance must get to those who need it. The sick and injured must be cared for without risk of attack. The basics for survival must not be used or withheld as weapons of war. We thank the Secretary General and the United Nations and, human and United Nations and humanitarian staff for their leadership, especially those working on the ground in enormously difficult circumstances and under significant constraints. We are distressed that the effective delivery of humanitarian aid in Gaza is now almost impossible. Ensuring meaningful humanitarian access is critical. It is a key requirement of international humanitarian law, particularly the Fourth Geneva Convention. We call on Israel to facilitate the necessary access immediately to alleviate the plight of civilians in Gaza. Last week, the Secretary General sounded the loudest possible alarm over this crisis. We must answer his call. It was for this reason, the urgent need for the provision of critical life-saving assistance that New Zealand co-sponsored the United Arab Emirates Security Council resolution, which called for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. 
we are deeply disappointed that the casting of a veto yet again prevented the Security Council from agreeing on a, on a response to a pressing crisis. The General Assembly has, once again, had to take action where the Security Council has failed to do so. In this Assembly, in late October, New Zealand joined 120 member states in voting for a resolution that called for an immediate, durable and sustained humanitarian truce to facilitate the delivery of aid. Today's General Assembly resolution has the same objective the fighting to stop and civilians to be protected. Therefore, New Zealand once again supported this call and voted for this resolution. At the same time, as we push for a humanitarian ceasefire, we urge all parties involved in the conflict, as well as countries with influence in the region, to take urgent steps towards establishing a sustainable ceasefire. A lasting solution to the conflict will only be achieved by peaceful means. Revival of the Middle East peace process is critical. There is no military solution to this conflict, just as there is no role for Hamas in the future governance of Gaza. Mr President, two final points. New Zealand condemns set settlement building and expansion in the West Bank which is illegal under international law, and condemns the violence being perpetrated by settlers. We call for Israel to address this urgently. New Zealand also urges governments in the, in the region to do all they can to ensure this conflict does not spill over into the wider region. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of New Zealand. I now give a floor to a distinguished representative of Czechia. Thank you, Mr. President, and let me start by, by stating unequivocally that Czechia grieves for every civilian life lost in the ongoing conflict, and we will continue to do so. The humanitarian situation in Gaza deeply troubles us, and we appreciate the collective efforts to protect civilians and alleviate their suffering. To that end, we welcome most aspects of this General Assembly resolution as a genuine attempt to address the current situation in the Middle East. But in the context of this emergency special session, the primary task of the General Assembly is the maintenance of international peace and security. This is not possible without addressing not only the issues related to the legal framework for the conduct of war, but also the conditions under which states may resort to the use of force. Regrettably, this resolution fails to condemn the unspeakable atrocities committed by Hamas on the 7th of October. The events of that day leave no room for excuses or justifications. The horrific terrorist attack by Hamas resulted in the tragic loss of countless lives spanning various nationalities. Furthermore, we have all been appalled by the horrifying images depicting victims of sexual violence inflicted by Hamas terrorists. We are also of the opinion that calling for an immediate ceasefire ignores the grave threat that Hamas poses not only to Israel but also to the Palestinian people. The harsh reality on the ground is that an immediate ceasefire would only leave Hamas in control, thereby significantly heightening the prospect of yet another devastating terrorist attack and human suffering. Let us also remember that the civilian death toll continues to rise due to Hamas's reprehensible practice of using civilian infrastructure and civilians as human shields. It is with this in mind that we believe that Israel needs to be able to exercise its right to defend itself, and it needs to do so in a manner that abides by international law and international humanitarian law. 
Mr. President, based on the reasons that I have just outlined, it is with a heavy heart that we decided to vote against this resolution. We appreciate the efforts by Austria and the United States to bring more balance to the text, and that is why we supported their amendments. Last but not least, let me reiterate my country's unwavering commitment to actively working towards a two-state solution. This is essential to achieving statehood for the Palestinian people, ensuring security for Israel, and peace for people on both sides. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Czechia. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Greece. Mr. President, Greece expresses deep concern about the grave humanitarian situation in Gaza, where we are unfortunately witnessing the rapid deterioration of the conditions on the ground. High priority right now should be to address the humanitarian urgency so that sufficient aid can be delivered to the civilian population through safe passages and by means of humanitarian pauses. Humanitarian needs must be addressed so as to sustain Palestinians in Gaza, give them the prospect of reconstruction, and avoid forced displacement from Gaza. We remind Greece's principal position that Israel has the right to defend itself while at the same time complying with international humanitarian law. We should not lose sight of the Hamas responsibility, its terrorist attack of October 7th, and its taking of Israeli hostages. We regret that the text does not condemn terrorism and does not mention that the hostages were taken and are held by Hamas. That is why we have co-sponsored the amendments proposed by Austria and the U.S. We would have preferred a resolution that ideally reflected those elements. However, considering the present critical humanitarian circumstances, we have decided to vote and voted in favor of this resolution. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Greece. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Canada. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice President. We mourn like everyone in this assembly, every Israeli and Palestinian innocent life which has been lost in this conflict, and we express our profound condolences to all families and communities affected by the terrible violence. Canada continues to unequivocally condemn Hamas's brutal terrorist attacks against Israel on October the 7th, including the sexual and gender-based violence and the killing, the maiming, and the abduction of civilians. We also continue to call for the immediate and unconditional release of all remaining hostages and demand that they be treated humanely in accordance with international law. We iterate the call for the facilitated departure of all foreign nationals in Gaza, including Canadians trying to leave Gaza. We recognize Israel's right to defend itself in defending itself, Israel must respect international humanitarian law. Civilians and civilian infrastructure must be protected. We are alarmed at the diminishing safe space for civilians in Gaza. The price of defeating Hamas cannot be the continuous suffering of Palestinian civilians. Canada remains deeply concerned by the humanitarian crisis and its severe impacts on Palestinian civilians, especially women and children. The ongoing humanitarian crisis has weighed heavily in Canada's decision to support this resolution. The recent pause in hostilities saw the release of more than 100 hostages and allowed for greater humanitarian access to affected Palestinian civilians. Canada regrets that this pause could not be extended and continues to call for much needed fuel, water, and other much needed humanitarian aid to reach Palestinians in Gaza. To this end, Canada supports the humanitarian ceasefire referred to in the resolution. as it is a necessary step to protect civilians, allow for much more humanitarian aid to enter Gaza, 
and allow for foreign nationals to leave Gaza, including Canadian nationals. Peace all hostages. Stop using Palestinian civilians as human shields. Stop intentionally occupying civilian sites for terrorist purposes and lay down its weapons. We continue to support a clear statement from the General Assembly calling out the role of Hamas in the conflict, its taking of hostages, and its use of human shields. And one day we will get one. This is why we supported the amendments proposed by Austria and the United States to the resolution, and why we join Australia and New Zealand in saying that Hamas can have no future role in the governance of Gaza. Canada remains committed to the goal of a comprehensive, a just, and a lasting peace in the Middle East, including the creation of a Palestinian state living side by side in peace and security with the state of Israel. Thank you, Mr. Vice President. I thank the distinguished representative of Canada. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Iceland. See how that flies. <laughs> in light of the humanitarian catastrophe unfolding in Gaza, Iceland has chosen to co-sponsor and consequently vote in favor of the resolution presented by Egypt. Following a much needed humanitarian pause, the resumption of hostilities has resulted in full-scale escalation of the conflict. Once again, innocent civilians trapped in unbearable conditions bear the brunt of this conflict and the civilian death toll is unacceptable. However, we regret that the two proposed amendments presented by Austria and the United States, acknowledging the brutal and indiscriminate terrorist attack by Hamas on 7th of October and their leading part in the taking of hostages were not passed. There can be no justification for terrorism. Recognizing, Ham recognizing Hamas's part in the ongoing conflict does not contradict our strong and urgent call for an immediate and sustained humanitarian ceasefire, full compliance with international law by all parties, protection of civilians, immediate release of hostages, and the timely and sufficient provision of humanitarian aid. Iceland supports the Secretary General's appeal for a decisive action by the Security Council invoking Article 99, and was one of the 102 UN member states that co-sponsored the draft resolution last Friday. The ongoing impasse in the Security Council is deeply regrettable. We call on Council members to redouble their efforts to avert further escalation and a collapse of the humanitarian system in Gaza. Mr. President, we deplore the immense suffering and unacceptable civilian death toll. We are alarmed by the impact of mass evacuations of civilians in Gaza. These need to stop. There is no safe place in Gaza. While increased flow of humanitarian aid through a second inspection point announced by Israel is a positive step, much more needs to be done. Life-saving aid to millions of civilians in need must be delivered now and access to food and water, electricity and fuel ensured. The vast majority of the population is already displaced, sheltering in overcrowded facilities, including schools that no longer provide education, or simply sleeping on the streets. Healthcare services are in tatters, and of growing concern is the high risk of epidemic and waterborne diseases, which would further compound the crisis. Iceland has responded to UN emergency appeals with increased contributions to UNRWA, our long-standing humanitarian partner. UNRWA services, the lifeline for over 2.2 million people in Gaza, are now on the verge of collapse, according to Commissioner General Lazzarini. If UNRWA fails, the, ent the entire humanitarian system in Gaza will follow. We must spare no efforts in preventing this from happening. We deplore that more than 130 UNRWA staff members have been killed in this conflict. Iceland has condemned in the strongest possible terms the brutal and indiscriminate terrorist attacks by Hamas two months ago. We have repeatedly called for the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, as the resolution we have just adopted rightly does. 
All parties to this conflict must adhere to their obligations under international humanitarian law. Breaches thereof must be carefully investigated, including of sexual violence. Mr. President, the Secretary General has rightly raised the alarm of further escalation of this conflict. Its consequences are being felt throughout the region and beyond. Across the world, people are calling for the hostilities to end. So did the Icelandic Parliament in a unanimous resolution on November the 9th. Even in the midst of crisis, when peace seems unrealistic and distant, we must focus on the long-term sustainable solution to the conflict, which two-state solution based on international law with Israel and Palestine living side by side in peace and security and mutual recognition. The cycle of violence must stop. I thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Iceland. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Switzerland. Merci. Thank you, Mr. President. Switzerland voted yes to the resolution tabled to the Assembly today. This resolution addresses the most press pressing issue, the protection of civilians and rapid, safe and unhindered access for humanitarian aid to people in need in Gaza, where, and I quote, no one is safe today, and where the humanitarian system is at risk of complete collapse, as the Secretary General said. Switzerland supported this resolution and demands its full implementation in the knowledge that the humanitarian ceasefire is understood as a time-limited humanitarian pause without prejudice to Israel's right to ensure its defense and its security. Switzerland continues to call upon the parties to respect in all circumstances their obligations under international humanitarian and human rights law in particular with regard to the protection of Israeli and Palestinian civilians, regardless of the adoption of resolutions by the main United Nations bodies. Humanitarian access through all possible crossing points, as well as respect for the principles of proportionality, distinction and precaution in the conduct of hostilities are part of these obligations. Respect for these principles is also necessary in order to prevent a regional escalation of the conflict, particularly in the West Bank and Lebanon. Switzerland has also voted yes to the amendments tabled by Austria and the United States and regrets that they have not been adopted. The Austrian amendment would have helped to clarify that humanitarian access must be immediate, which corresponds to the repeated requests of the Secretary General and other senior representatives of impartial humanitarian organizations in view of the humanitarian emergency in Gaza. The adoption of this amendment would have also allowed to clearly identify the parties responsible for the hostage taking, including Hamas and other groups. Finally, since the 7th of October, we su have supported an explicit condemnation of the acts of terror perpetrated by Hamas and would have preferred it to have been included in the resolution as proposed in the U.S. amendment. Mr. President, in the immediate term, the implementation of ceasefires for humanitarian purposes and the provision of aid must urgently save lives and enable humanitarian actors to carry out their work in safety. But these measures cannot be ends in themselves. Switzerland will continue to work towards a political solution to the conflict in accordance with international law. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Switzerland. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Philippines. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, while we condemn the October 7 terrorist attacks perpetrated by Hamas, the Philippines emphasizes adherence to international humanitarian law especially the principles of proportionality and distinction in response to security threats. It is imperative that any military action consider the Im impact on civilians and strives to minimize, if not eliminate, collateral damage. We are deeply concerned about the humanitarian situation in Gaza. The Philippines believe strongly that a humanitarian ceasefire is crucial to halt the loss of life and suffering. This ceasefire is a necessary step to facilitate the delivery of urgent humanitarian aid to all affected civilians, irrespective of their affiliation. 
We call on all parties to comply with their obligations under international law, particularly regarding the protection of civilians, especially women and children. Upholding these laws is essential in ensuring the safety and dignity of all individuals affected by this conflict. Finally, the Philippines seeks to contribute to a solution that respects the rights and needs of both Palestinian and Israeli civilians. We advocate for a peaceful resolution that upholds international law and leads to lasting peace and security in the region. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Philippines. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Sri Lanka. Mr. President, Sri Lanka condemns terrorism in all its forms and manifestations. Similarly, we have condemned the attacks that took place on 7th October. However, the thrust of resolution L27 just adopted and which Sri Lanka co-sponsored is entitled Protection of Civilians and Upholding Legal and Humanitarian Obligations. It focuses on the UN Secretary General's call invoking Article 99 of the UN Charter. The letter of 7 December by the head of UNRWA. It expresses concern at the humanitarian situation in Gaza, emphasizes the need for the protection of civilians, both Israeli and Palestinian, calls upon all parties to exercise maximum restraint, demands an immediate ceasefire, the unconditional release of hostages held by all parties, and reiterates the demand for all parties to comply with their obligations under humanitarian law. The resolution L27 does not seek to condemn any party to the conflict or seek to apportion blame on any party. The amendments L28 presented by Austria and L29 presented by the USA seek to apportion blame only on one party. The adoption of either would have diverted the focus of the resolution and made it manifestly imbalanced. Sri Lanka therefore voted against both amendments. Thank you. I Thank uh, distinguished representative of Sri Lanka. I now give a floor to distinguished representative of Portugal. Thank you, Mr. President. We welcome the General Assembly resolution adopted today. While deeply disappointed that the use of veto has hindered the Security Council, we must remain seized of the urgency of the situation and continue to press for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire. Today, the General Assembly took a clear stance in demanding full respect for international humanitarian law and the protection of civilian populations, in demanding the unconditional and immediate release of hostages and the ensuring of unhindered and sustained humanitarian aid. We sincerely hope that these calls, echoing the ones timely made by the Secretary General of the United Nations and other representatives of the UN system, will be heeded. The situation on the ground in the Gaza Strip is unbearable, with a mounting number of casualties, many, far too many of them, women and children, and huge numbers of displaced people. The fighting must be halted. It also remains crucial to avoid the spread of the conflict to the West Bank and beyond by accident or calculated action. We encourage the continuation of regional and international efforts, both in multilateral and bilateral spheres, to prevent a spillover. We need to return to the diplomatic track, breaking this cycle of violence and extremism. It is our collective responsibility to address the structural drivers of this conflict. This will require a renewed involvement of all relevant actors and a determined effort to implement the United Nations Security Council resolutions on the matter and set a clear and solid path to a Palestinian state fulfilling the two-state solution. Mr. President, once again, Portugal reiterates its unequivocal condemnation of the heinous terrorist attacks by Hamas on October the 7th. Terrorism in all its forms should be condemned. For this reason, we supported the amendments presented today as they aimed at that purpose without compromising the message that was strongly supported regarding the situation in Gaza. 
Gaza needs a swift, unhindered, and scaled up response. Gaza needs all parts to comply by their obligations under international law, including international humanitarian law and human rights. Gaza needs a humanitarian ceasefire, as this resolution makes clear. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Portugal. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Hungary. Thank you, Mr. President. We are here today to discuss the dire humanitarian situation in Gaza, ignited by the horrendous and brutal acts of terrorism committed by Hamas on 7 October. Hungary condemns these brutal and barbaric attacks in the strongest possible terms, and we would have hoped for the General Assembly to do accordingly after two months of silence on this issue. We find it unacceptable that today's resolution once again fail to condemn the barbaric attacks that have led to today's events, including continuous indiscriminate rocket attacks against Israeli civilians. We also condemn the use of Palestinian civilians, civilian infrastructure, and hospitals as human shields by Hamas. These acts are flagrant violations of international humanitarian law. In face of such violent terrorist attacks, Hungary strongly emphasizes Israel's inherent right to defend itself in accordance with international law and international humanitarian law. All parties must uphold and respect their obligations under international humanitarian law. All civilian life matters equally. In this vein, we recall the resolution adopted by the Security Council calling for urgent and extended humanitarian pauses and corridors throughout the Gaza Strip and recalling all parties' obligation to act in compliance with international humanitarian law, notably with regard to the protection of civilians, especially children. We welcome that finally two months after 7 October attacks, the General Assembly is now calling for the release of the hostages held by Hamas. We once again call on Hamas and other terrorist groups within Gaza to release all remaining hostages immediately and without precondition, cease hostilities and spare all civilians from further suffering. We recall that there are Hungarian citizens who are also being held hostage by the terrorists. It is crucial that the ICRC is granted access to the hostages and thereby humanitarian assistance and medical support reaches those held in captivity as well. Taking hostages is a grave violation of international humanitarian law. Mr. President, immediate, safe, sustainable, and unhindered delivery of humanitarian aid is required through all necessary measures, including humanitarian corridors and pauses for humanitarian needs. Food, water, medical care, fuel, and shelter should be able to reach the most vulnerable whilst ensuring that such aid is not abused by terrorist organizations. The hostilities are severely impacting hospitals and taking a horrific toll on medical and humanitarian staff, including United Nations personnel. Their safety and security must also be ensured. We must utilize our collective efforts capabilities and engagement in order to avoid a spillover to the region, as it would have even more devastating humanitarian consequences. Mr. President, there are the reasons why we supported the amendments submitted by Austria and the United States, and these are the exact same reasons why we couldn't support the resolution. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Hungary. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Republic of Moldova. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, the Republic of Moldova voted in favor of the draft resolution L27 entitled Protection of Civilians and Upholding Legal and Humanitarian Obligations. My country has joined other UN member states in strongly condemning the Hamas brutal and terrorist attack against Israel on 7th of October, since there is no ju uh, justification for terror. Furthermore, my country recognizes Israel's uh, right to self-defense in accordance with the international law, 
including international humanitarian law. In this respect, Moldova has supported and would have welcomed the inclusion of the amendments proposed by the United States and Austria in the draft resolution. Nevertheless, the urgency of the situation on the ground brought us to support this resolution. We deeply sympathize with the, all the innocent victim, victims, Israeli, Palestinians, citizens from many other countries, as well as the UN staff members. Palestinian and Israeli civilians' population must be protected. All hostages held by Hamas and other groups must be released immediately and unconditionally. Full and unimpeded access to humanitarian assistance must be provided throughout Gaza. Likewise, safe passage must be assured to all those who wish to leave Gaza. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Republic of Moldova. I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Liechtenstein. Mr. President, my delegation has voted in favor of the resolution adopted by this assembly. We have done so in light of the catastrophic humanitarian situation on the ground described by the relevant UN agencies, the International Committee of the Red Cross, and others. We had already supported a similar call by this assembly in late October and note the positive, albeit short, the reprieve for the affected civilian populations during the period when fighting finally ceased, both with respect to the release of hostages and the delivery of urgently needed humanitarian assistance. The situation today is even more distressing and we are therefore supportive of a humanitarian ceasefire as called for by the Secretary General which was unfortunately blocked by the use of the veto last Friday in the Security Council. We are also fully supportive of the calls for the full respect for international humanitarian law by conflict parties, the call for the immediate and unconditional release of all hostages, as well as provisions concerning humanitarian assistance. While the resolution addresses immediate priorities to, to protect civilians, it does not comprehensively reflect our position. We have therefore supported the amendment put forward by the United States as we agree that the condemnation of the terrorist attacks by Hamas by a political body of the United Nations would have been important and necessary. Ideally, this condemnation would have happened in the Security Council itself on October the 8th in accordance with established council practice immediately after the attack on the civilian population in Israel when unfortunately no text to this effect was considered, or in one of the early subsequent meetings of the Council. Absent that, we have voted for the second time in the emergency special session for an amendment proposal along these lines. Mr. President, the last few weeks have demonstrated the necessity of diplomacy in the face of an unprecedented crisis of the protection of civilians. The progress made in this area between the 24th and the 30th of November came in accordance with the terms of a resolution adopted in the most recent convening of the emergency special session as well as with those of Council Resolution 2712. We deplored a veto cast on Friday in the Council which blocked a decision supported by a very clear majority in the Council and in a wider membership as well. We encourage you Mr. President as you have done before in meetings resulting from use of the veto to produce a summary of this meeting for transmission to the Security Council. Mr. President, we welcome the leadership of Secretary General Guterres and his personal engagement for the protection of civilians. We support his decision to invoke Article 99 highlighted in today's resolution and hope that this indicates a renewed willingness to, to use this powerful tour, tool in other situations were warranted. Liechtenstein condemns in the strongest possible terms the heinous terrorist attacks against Israel by Hamas and other groups and the massive violations of international humanitarian law they have committed. We call again for the unconditional and immediate release of all remaining hostages. We also underline again the need for full, immediate, safe, unhindered and sustained humanitarian access and the call for the full respect of international humanitarian law by all parties and that access is granted 
to humanitarian organizations to provide the necessary emergency relief. 133 UNRWA staff and many other humanitarian workers have now died in Gaza, the highest number of UN casualties in any operation since the founding of our organization. We condemn deliberate attacks on humanitarian workers and pay tribute to those who have lost their lives while acting to save the lives of others and alleviate suffering in extreme circumstances. The denial of humanitarian access to civilians and attacks against humanitarian workers are both prohibited under the Fourth Geneva Convention and its additional protocols and may amount to a war crime. Mr. President, Liechtenstein called for accountability for serious violations of international human rights and hum humanitarian law, including through the ongoing investigations of the International Criminal Court, which has jurisdiction over the most serious crimes under international law committed on the territory of the State of Palestine and by Palestinian nationals. We are particularly concerned by the numerous reports of sexual and gender-based violence committed by Hamas. All such reported crimes must be vigorously investigated and prosecuted. We are further deeply concerned by the massive escalation of violence in the West Bank, in particular extremist settler violence. Mr. President, the time for diplomacy is now. It is too late to avert the horror of human suffering and the shocking loss of human life, but it is not too late to bring an end to the ongoing catastrophe. The inalienable rights of both Israeli and Palestinian peoples can only be ensured by upholding their respective right to self-determination expressed through a two-state solution. Serious, committed, and legitimate interlocutors ready for genuine engagement for peace are a prerequisite, as is the strong support of the international community. I thank you. I thank um, the distinguished representative of Liechtenstein. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Poland. Mr. President, uh, Poland's support for the UN General Assembly resolution entitled Protection of Civilians and Upholding Legal and Humanitarian Obligations stems from our long-standing commitment to the principles of international humanitarian law. The multilateralism and the rule-based international order have always been and remain Poland's top priority. Therefore, we express our strong support for the Secretary General and the United Nations, commending their invaluable efforts in addressing the crisis in the Gaza Strip. Poland's commitment to the aforementioned values reflects our involvement in efforts to elevate the dire humanitarian situation of the population in the Middle East and to restore peace in the region. For decades, Poland has been involved in humanitarian and, de and uh, development aid projects in the Middle East, with particular focus on the Palestine, including Gaza, Lebanon, and Jordan. Mr. President, in the light of the current situation, our position remains very clear. We remain concerned over the dramatic humanitarian situation in the Gaza Strip. We support all international coordination aimed at uh, restoring calm and a speedy and continued flow of humanitarian aid to the civilians in Gaza. We also express our gratitude to the personnel and of international organizations, UN agencies, especially that of the UNRWA. Poland decided to provide additional funds, amounting to over two million US dollars, to be used by UNRWA, WFP, and the UNICEF's Gaza Fund. We strongly underline that the humanitarian assistance should be distributed by UN agencies in order not to fall in the hands of terrorists. Mr. President, at the same time, we stress that terrorism aimed at the civilian population is never justified and cannot be tolerated under any circumstances. We reiterate our conviction that Israel, like any other country, has the right to defend itself and its citizens. However, we wish to stress that this must take place in compliance with international law, including the humanitarian law the civilian pop population must be protected. We reiterate our strong condemnation of the barbaric terrorist attacks by Hamas and other Gaza militant groups that brought death and suffering to the innocent people of, of Israel. We also continue our call for an immediate and unconditional release of all hostages taken by Hamas. In this vein, the amendments presented by the US and Austria correspond to, with our position. We believe they offered a valuable and important contribution to the document. 
That is why we decided also to support, support, to support them. And I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Poland. I now give a floor to distinguished representative of Tunisia. Thank you, Mr. President. Tunisia voted for the draft resolution as it calls for an immediate humanitarian ceasefire and an end to the barbaric aggression against Palestinian civilians both in the Gaza Strip and the other occupied Palestinian territories for more than 60 days. These attacks have led to unprecedented humanitarian uh, tragedies, uh, atrocities, uh, war crimes uh, by occupation forces against children, women, elderly people, families, uh, patients, uh, medical teams, uh, and uh, humanitarian workers. We had hoped that this resolution would be adopted in the Security Council. The Council has prove that it is hostage to political calculations, it is clearly unable to shoulder its responsibilities, both moral and legal. It cannot rebuild its image in this way. We welcome the position of the Secretary General and his invoking Article 99 of the Charter. We renew his call to the international community and the Security Council to shoulder their responsibilities and ensure the respect of international law, international humanity law and human rights. This is a duty, not an option. All uh, uh, occupation forces must be held account for what they have and continue to do against the Palestinian people. Massacres, crimes, and humiliation in a bizarre international uh, uh, silence. We cannot equate between the uh, butcher and the victim, between those who occupy, besiege, and disperse others, and those who are suffering the worst kinds of uh, collective punishment and violations. Civilians require protection. It is the Palestinians that are being pursued by the Israeli killing machine everywhere. All the world has witnessed uh, the humiliation by uh, the occupation forces of Palestinians uh, as they were dispersed uh, by taking off their clothes and humiliating them. It is uh, very uh, contradictory that uh, the, uh, col uh, the uh, commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the uh, uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights coincides uh, with uh, the world losing its humanity and uh, the uh, progressive erosion of all those principles that uh, protect uh, the dignity of uh, mankind and respect the basic rights, especially that uh, to life. Life is a moment and a position. In this moment, uh, in face of our conscience and our duties, we say that history will not forgive the failure of the international community to put an end to aggression, to lessen the suffering of the Palestinian people. The silence in face of the killing of more than 18,000 civilians, the uh, bombardment and the um, uh, uh, destruction of more than 300,000 homes, the dispersion of more than 1.5 million Palestinians, the targeting of hospitals, schools, and uh, uh, mosques. It is important to import such a resolution. It, however, it is uh, more important uh, to ensure its implementation. We therefore call again for an effective, resource, responsible international move away from double standards uh, in order to ensure protection to the Palestinian people and end uh, the crimes of occupation. Tunisia will always stand uh, shoulder to shoulder with the Palestinian people. We fully support uh, their inalienable rights uh, to self-determination freedom and independence and its independent sovereign state on its own land with East Jerusalem as its capital. Thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Tunisia. I now give a floor to distinguished representative of Ghana. President. Ghana has consistently maintained that the international community has a responsibility to help 
and the humanitarian catastrophe unfolding in the Gaza Strip. A few days ago, we supported a similar draft resolution in the Security Council towards achieving this objective, and we did the same today because we believe it is the right thing to do at this time. We reiterate our condemnation of the unwarranted attacks by Hamas that began on 7th October and our demand for all hostages to be released unconditionally. We reaffirm our commitment to the two-state solution and express the hope that the current international mediation efforts would help to end the cycle of violence on a permanent basis. I thank you. I thank the distinguished representative of Ghana. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Italy. Mr. President, uh, let me first thank the President of the General Assembly, Francis, for promptly convening and sharing this um, emergency special session. Let me begin by joining the other delegations in acknowledging the tireless efforts of the United Nations and all humanitarian partners on the ground who are delivering assistance under extreme conditions. Turning to today's proceedings, uh, Italy abstained on the resolution protecting our civilians and upholding legal and humanitarian obligations just adopted and promoted by Egypt, whom we would like to wholeheartedly thank. Italy is deeply concerned for the humanitarian emergency in Gaza and is working bilaterally and with uh, our international and regional friends and partners to alleviate the suffering of civilians because in this conflict, the most vulnerable ones, children, women, and elderly, are those who are paying the highest toll. Italy is helping to treat injured Palestinians and also children in partnership with the UAE. We provided extra assistance to Palestinians through the United Nations agencies. We are in close contact with our close Arab friends and partners in the region to explore ways to achieve a sustainable peace and stability in the region. In this vein, we would support initiatives aimed at de-escalation, including humanitarian pauses to facilitate the delivery of humanitarian assistance, the protection of civilians, and the liberation of all hostages. We decided, however, to abstain because there are many elements that are still missing from the resolution, and namely the unequivocal condemnation of the brutal indiscriminate terrorist attacks by Hamas against innocent civilians on October 7th. We have already reiterated our outright condemnation several times. We would have hoped to see it incorporated in the text just adopted, and we reaffirm again today, hoping that the time when this Assembly and the Security Council could finally deplore such atrocious crimes and recognize Hamas's sole, res sole responsibility for the brutal attack of October 7th is near. For those reasons, we voted in favor of the amendments proposed by the United States and Austria. There is no justification for terror, and there should be accountability for the 7th of October crimes. Let me recall on this the initiative that Italy, together with France and Germany, has recently launched in the EU, asking for additional individual uh, of a uh, sanctions against Hamas supporters. In face of such terrorist threat, Italy recognizes the legitimate right of self-defense of Israel. We stress at the same time that the exercise of such a right of self-defense needs to be in full compliance with international law and international humanitarian law. We have asked and we will continue to ask Israel to do its utmost to minimize civilian victims. Finally, we should not lose sight of the broader picture. We firmly believe that the only viable solution to peace in the Middle East remains the two-state solution. I thank you. I thank the uh, distinguished representative of Italy. I now give the floor to distinguished representative of Syrian Arab Republic. Shukran, Thank you, Mr. President. 
My delegation voted for the draft resolution adopted by the General Assembly because it represents a genuine expression of the will of humanity and it calls for an immediate cessation of the violent aggression on the brotherly Palestinian people. Once again, we express our reservation regarding some of the language in the resolution, which could mean equating between the Israeli occupier and the occupied Palestinian people, between the butcher and the victim. Mr. President, allow me to thank you. Mr. Dennis Francis, the President of the General Assembly, for resuming the uh, emergency special session at the General Assembly to discuss the dangerous situation in the occupied Palestinian territory, especially as the Security Council is facing inaction because the United States is preventing it from shouldering its responsibility, namely the maintenance of international peace and security. The United States insists on giving Israel the green light to continue its brutal aggression in Gaza. We commend the courageous step taken by His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, who is shouldering his responsibilities despite the ferocious campaigns launched against him by invoking Article 99 of the UN Charter and warning the Security Council that what is taking place in the Gaza Strip is, a, is a, an issue that threatens international peace and security. We deplore and express grave concern given the deteriorating situation in Gaza. This was stated by the Commissioner General of UNRWA in his letter to the President of the General Assembly, informing him that UNRWA, and UNRWA's ability to implement its mandate in Gaza has become very limited and stressing that UNRWA is going through its most difficult circumstances in history and calling upon the uh, General Assembly to take immediate action. Mr. President, we are resuming the session today for the second time in less than two months because the United States and some Western countries insist on ending the Palestinian question, insist on killing the uh, children of Palestine in support of the Israel Israeli entity, which is carrying an unprecedented genocide that has led so far to the death of 18,000 people, most of whom are children and women, in a systemic campaign in which Israel targeted journalists and even UN employees. Israel destroyed infrastructure and continued its inhumane blockade on Gaza. It prevented the delivery of humanitarian assistance and used internationally prohibited weapons, including phosphorus um, bombs. It threatened of using nuclear bombs and adopting a destructive policy. This is a war crime, crime against humanity, a, a genocide and ethnic cl cleansing. It is violating all the rules of humanity and all uh, the rules of international law. Everyone must be aware that what is taking place today in the occupied Palestinian territory did not start on the 7th of October. It started decades ago because Israel continue to deny the Palestinian people from their right to establish an independent state with Jerusalem as a capital. Israel continued to occupy Palestine and continued with its aggression since 1948. The United States has used the veto once again in the Security Council. It stood against the will of the majority of the members of the Security Council. This was an attempt to stop the ceasefire, a humanitarian ceasefire. This is shameful, and this proves that w when they claim that they want to protect civilians, it's a lie. This undoubtedly proves that Washington and other Western states are waging the war in Gaza with the Israeli occupation with the sole objective to eliminate the Palestinian people and establish the so-called um, greater Israel on the dead uh, women and children after destroying their houses and cultural heritage. Instead of allowing the Security Council to shoulder its responsibilities after two months of massacres and genocide, the U.S. veto, veto protected war criminals and gave them yet another green light to continue with their massacres, destruction and displacement. How ironic 
that the state claiming to protect democracy and human rights and who is supposed to contribute to the maintenance of international peace and security is now preventing the Security Council from shouldering its responsibility, namely stopping the Israeli aggression. This proves its bias and its biased uh, policies when it allows Israel to act with full impunity when it violates international law and the UN Charter. We all saw how the inaction time and again by the um, Security Council encouraged Israel after the pause to continue with its systemic cries, uh, crimes, falsely claiming that it has the right to self-defense at a time when Western states are shutting uh, crocodile tears over the principles of humanity in other regions of the world. This is a, a blatant picture of international hypocrisy, of the double standards. And we would tell these uh, countries, and they know full well who they are, we will never believe you again. Mr. President, Israel today is setting fire to the region. It is pushing it to the brink of an implosion that cannot be contained through the criminal uh, attempts it is doing in Palestine. It continues to occupy the, uh, the occupied Syrian Golan and continues to target civilian infrastructure and uh, airports. Israel continues to target Lebanon in a blatant violation of the international law and the UN Charter. This proves once again, that Israel is only a tool to sow the seeds of chaos in the region and to sow the seeds of terrorism in the region. It is the main threat to international and regional peace and security. All of this is taking place as the United States and partners are protecting Israel. They have recently sent their ships to the Mediterranean uh, and provided unprecedented military and financial support to the Israeli entity. In conclusion, Mr. President, we would like to stress once again that we stand with the brotherly Palestinian people in their quest to liberate their occupied territory and establish a sovereign independent state with Jerusalem as a capital. We stress the need for the immediate cessation of hostilities and provide uh, the urgent humanity support the people in Gaza to stop the forced displacement and ensure Israel is held accountable. Thank you, Mr. President. I thank the distinguished representative of Syrian Arab Republic. I now give a floor to the distinguished representative of Russian Federation. Mr. President, colleagues, the world uh, for two months now has been witnessing the fact that in the area of Israeli-Palestinian conflict, there is a horrendous tragedy unfolding. Every hour, literally, tens of innocent civilians are dying. We note the efforts made by the Arab group headed by Egypt to prepare a draft resolution to the General Assembly with a demand for ceasefire and immediate release of hostages so as to prevent a humanitarian disaster in Gaza. We, in turn, were co-sponsors of the initiative by the Arab countries, and we hope that right after the General Assembly, the Security Council as well will finally be able to discharge its responsibilities, all the more so since the representatives of the United Arab Emirates prepared and introduced to the Security Council yet another draft, and it is on increasing and monitoring humanitarian supplies into Gaza. Distinguished colleagues, um, essentially, we are witnessing the implementation of a plan to bomb the Gaza Strip into the Stone Age, and the scope of the disaster compelled the Secretary General to, for the first time in many years, use his authorities under um, Article 99 of the Charter and call on the Security Council to pass a decision on ending the bloodshed. We are pained to acknowledge that throughout the, all of this time, the collective efforts within the UN did not provide us with a needed result. But the reason for that is not because a, a multilateral diplomacy is stalling. It has nothing to do with the incapacity of Security Council to do its job, as is being said by many, including today. Let's call a spade a spade. 
The reason here is that all peacemaking efforts hit a wall in the form of the United States. From the very beginning, the United States have directly rejected multilateral diplomacy. America, um, diplomacy. American representatives kept saying that while Washington is conducting quiet diplomacy on the ground, no one should interfere, so as not to impede them. And that is the main reason why the Security Council has not been able, throughout this time, come up with a decisive measure. A whole number of members provided draft decision on settling the situation and worked basically around the clock as a, and conducting intensive negotiation. UAE, Russia, and China keep asking for Security Council meetings on Gaza, which is something that was never done by Western colleagues. On the 16th of October, Russia already put forward the first draft on immediate ceasefire. Western delegations did not support it. Because of the American veto, what was stopped was a Brazilian draft as well, which was gaining support of Security Council members. Since then, many horrible events took place, and they show that there's no alternative to something was said from the beginning, to an unmistakable demand to parties to stop hostilities and violence. A demand, not appeals, as the Security Council should do. Security Council come very close to such a decision on the 8th of December. There was a draft on a ceasefire put forward by the Arab group, introduced by the UAE. It rallied more than 100 co-sponsors. It was short. It was simple. It was vital, um, as characterized by th by its uh, authors from UAE. It contained also demands for humanitarian access and release of hostages. In other words, it confirmed the need for full and strict upholding of international humanitarian law, first and foremost to protect the civilians in armed conflict. In other words, the text contained everything that the security, um, that the Secretary General asked in his unprecedented letter. We highly value the efforts made by Abu Dhabi to draft and move this document forward. They are courageous and consistent line taken by the um, Emirati colleagues. As a result of this, there were 13 members of Security Council who supported the draft. But the United States, as on the 18th of October, shielded their main Middle East ally and vetoed the decision of Security Council. And the UK did not find the courage to let Washington stand alone and abstained. The result of such steps undertaken by the Anglo-Saxon tandem is a continued horrendous bloodshed. Thousands of people died and, dis and, and, and uh, catastrophic destruction. With this veto, the American side essentially issued a license to kill and now bears full responsibility for each new victim of the conflict in Gaza. And sharing this blame with them is something that other members of Security Council and members of the UN as a whole should not be asked to do. Colleagues, I just returned from a visit made by Security Council members to the Rafah um, checkpoint, which is or, which was organized by UAE and Egypt. We had an opportunity there to talk to local authorities, to um, uh, a representative of Egyptian and Palestinian Red Crescent, representative of UNRWA, um, UN country team, to visit the hospital in Al Arisha, and also get in touch with a rep with the staff of the field hospital by UAE in Gaza. We also visited the desalination water station and visited the Raha point. This enabled us to better understand what is happening in the Strip. We see people, children maimed in a hospital, a mother who lost her limbs but gave birth to a child, hundreds of trucks for humanitarian assistance which are waiting for the checks in Egypt and Israel, then in Egypt, and then bit by bit are allowed to enter into Gaza. This is humanitarian situation in the Strip is disastrous and is worsening by the day. But even, uh, even if it's more difficult to imagine and what could be worse. And all of our interlocutors said the same thing. A ceasefire is needed. We need to stop the massacre. And I, uh, what, what comes to my mind is a blockade of Leningrad by the Nazis during World War II. It lasted almost 900 days and resulted in more than one million people of Leningrad dying. Is Gaza awaiting the same fate? It is impossible to imagine that something like this is happening nowadays. I thank you. I thank a distinguished representative of Russian Federation. We have heard the last speaker in explanation of vote after the vote uh, for this meeting. We shall hear the remaining speakers in explanation of vote after the vote on Friday, 15th of December at 3 p.m. in this hall to be followed by the resumption of a debate on agenda item five. 
The meeting is adjourned.